let's talk about the pros and cons of the upcoming PlayStation Portal, Sony's newest take on handheld gaming. I'm going to start off with the pros because I've seen way too much hate for this device already, so let's show it a little bit of love. One of the biggest pros of this device is that it allows you to play your PS5 anywhere that has a decent Wi-Fi connection. So you could use this in your home if your wife or kids are already using the TV or you just want to play in bed or something like that, which I know tons of people will. But even better, you can take this device anywhere. You can take it to a friend's house and you can start playing your PS5 from there. It's also entirely possible you'll be able to play this from other places like a coffee shop or a McDonald's, but only time will tell how well this device works on slower or crappy Wi-Fi. Another huge benefit to the PlayStation Portal is the controller. Anyone who has had any handheld in the past knows they're usually not very comfortable for long periods of time. And even though some of them aren't terrible, I think we can all agree that using a straight up PS5 controller split in half is probably going to be the most comfortable handheld device ever. And that doesn't even begin to cover all the pros of the PS5 controller being used. It will have the full functionality of a PS5 DualSense controller, meaning the adaptive triggers and haptic feedback is all going to be there. I already consider the PS5 controller to be one of the best controllers ever made, so being able to use it portably is a massive W. One of the biggest reasons to buy the portal is the $200 price point. I think this is a pretty low starting price for a device that allows you to play your PS5 from anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection, and although you do need a PS5 to use this thing, we'll get into that once we get to the cons, but overall I think $200 is a very fair price point. With the portal essentially being a portable screen for your PS5, hence the name Portal, that means you don't need to purchase any new games. And any games that you already have on your PS5, you can play on the portal, including disc and digital. And just to be clear, you can play any PlayStation 5 game, even the massive, graphically demanding ones like God of War or Spider-Man, making this an extremely good option for people who already have a PS5 and a huge library of games that they already paid for. Here are some more small pros that I can list off quickly before we get into the cons. Since your PS5 is running the game, it means this device will be extremely lightweight considering there's really not much hardware inside of it. The screen is an 8 inch LCD screen capable of 1080p at 60fps and there is a 3.5mm headphone jack as well as built in speakers. These are all pros in my opinion. Alright, I think we went over most of the pros of the Portal, now let's talk about the cons. The biggest con for most people is that the PlayStation Portal can't play any games on its own merit, meaning without Wi-Fi you can't play anything and the device is rendered completely useless. Same being said if you don't have a PS5. This product won't do anything. So I want to emphasize that if you don't have a PlayStation 5, do not buy this product unless you plan on buying both of them at once and then you are looking at a hefty price tag of $700. Another letdown is that this device doesn't have traditional Bluetooth for some reason. So if you don't want to use the speakers or you don't have headphones to plug into the headphone jack, then you'll have no choice but to buy Sony's new wireless earbuds or headset, which is lame, but at least they gave us the headphone jack, otherwise that would have been a massive L. What I would say is the biggest con for me personally is that since the device is a streaming device and it only works as well as your Wi-Fi does, although you could technically play something like Call of Duty, it probably wouldn't be very enjoyable because there's going to be some kind of delay no matter what. So if you plan on playing anything competitively, I wouldn't recommend this device for that purpose at all. Another con is that even if you are using this at your house, you will still have to connect via Wi-Fi. I think it would have been really cool if you were close to your PS5, it used Bluetooth instead, giving you a much more seamless gameplay experience. Similar to the Wii U gamepad, hopefully this is something they realize and add on to a newer model later on. Some other small cons I've seen people mention are the shape of the handheld and how it's kind of big and awkward when you're not using it, and also the screen being just an LCD screen and not OLED which I can agree OLED would have been nice, but then that $200 price point would probably increase. It would have also been nice if you could just straight up use it as an extra controller when your friends are over or something, but it doesn't look like that's possible, at least not right now. 
Overall, I think I mentioned most of the pros and cons of the PlayStation Portal, but I know you guys will definitely let me know in the comments which cons I missed, and that is A-OK -okay with me. I want everybody to let their opinions be heard, and all I ask is that you keep a slightly open mind and make your own opinion and decisions to the best of your ability. I do want to say that I think the PlayStation Portal is a great option for a lot of people out there, and I'm really looking forward to trying it. It releases on November 15th, and I'm going to do my best to get my hands on one and continue to give you guys the best content that I can. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for future content. And as always, peace.